you know, I gotta give you some credit here. Yeah, yeah I want to give you some credit. You um, do? yeah, there's there's nothing. There, I'm not saying nothing, but it is a very satisfying feeling when you've um had sex and then your wife gets up and there's no spot left on the bed. Shout out to that, yo. <laughs> Yo, that is <laughs> what? Don't y'all know the spot on the bed? Y'all know if y'all gotta lay on that spot, y'all gotta put a towel down or something. We don't have to do that. Oh my <laughs> what? What? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you talking about? What that are is you great. Doing right now? Well, Jordan unfollowed us, right? <laughs> she's not, she's not gonna be listening. <laughs> Oh, oh, put y'all up on something, man. Rest, rest in peace, right? Yeah, rest yeah. in peace, Black Rob, yo. Black Rob, man. This was a song for like chokeholds a, a whole year. Yeah, <laughs> she was old. I mean, whoa. whoa. You can sing along to the song. You don't need another word. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. 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 This is Chico. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. No one's lost. More so I ripped it to a song with fast, fast life. Come through in the poor slow like bro. My, my nigga, like bro, like bro, like bro, like bro, like bro, like bro. Hey, hey. Like bro. Oh, now man. I'm not strange in the range like bro. Hundred miles an hour switching lanes like bro. Plus I'm getting brain from this chick like bro. Whoa. Shout out to Nori for making. Like yo, shout, yo, shout, shout out to, shout out to Nori for making um. Getting getting head while driving a thing. <laughs> I know it was already a thing, but I'm just saying he made it he made it pop. Have you ever been on the receiving end of that? Why are you asking me a question like that? <laughs> what are we doing here, yo? Come on, son. We're not, just, we're not opening up no floodgates for no bullshit like that in my relationship. <laughs> Welcome to episode sixty seven of the Weird Brunch Podcast. <laughs> Hey, my wife did pop. And you wonder why we keep going viral off of your takes. <laughs> I just asked, have you ever received head while driving? Oh, I thought it was uh, a, a very appropriate mercy. question considering what you said. Mm-hmm. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. boys and <laughs> girls. You're trying to chat me up. You see, <laughs> fella, you see that shit? Welcome to the Where's Brunch Podcast. I am Trina Marie. Yo, I'm Brock, man. And we are the dynamic duo known as the Where's Brunch Podcast. And we welcome you to subscribe, like, share, comment, follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, the TikToks. The TikToks. Um, we ain't dancing. And we're on threads too. But yes, welcome to the Where's Brunch podcast. We're also streaming on all streaming platforms from Apple Music to Amazon to Spotify. All of those good sites you can listen if you'd rather have your ears entertained. Or you can view us on YouTube if you'd like to have the visual experience. I'm I'm slightly handsome, I think, sometimes. I don't give a a horrible uh, visual experience. I think I'm I'm, not, I'm a little light on the eyes too. Yeah, you, you know. All right now, it's <laughs> half of the show. Look, y'all, and hit me hit us up at a Where's Brunch Podcast at gmail dot com if you want to be added to the mailing list. Yes, join the brunch crew for all types of insider information. And announcements. And announcements. Insider. <laughs> get the insider information before the rest of the world. Gets yeah. It, all right. Yo, man, we here. 
we are here. We've had a little bit of a break, and now we are back. And summertime is tough. Summer is summer, oh, cheers, summer, cheers. summertime. We got a little bit cheers. of Trader, some Trader Joe's bubbly. We got a little Blanc de Blanc, six ninety nine at your local Trader Joe's, ladies and gentlemen. What is it? It is all Chardonnay. Okay. All Chardonnay sparkling wine. Just sparkling wine. I don't, um, I'm, I'm assuming this is made in the U.S.? I believe California. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. California? California. Yo, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. We had a good day today. Good morning. Good start. Yeah. Um, It was really nice and sexy and woo, 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 woo rooftopping. You know, it was yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, you know, be a little expansive on our <sighs> moving around. I'm uh, very happy that uh, we did what we did today. Get comfortable here. That, that, that was really, really great. I'm so happy that I didn't be like, I ain't like that place the last time I was there. I don't want to go there. Blah, blah, blah. It was really great. So for those in the DMV, we went to Jula's on the Potomac, which, you, which used to be Cafe 44. Yes. Um, And Trina went there previously for Mother's Day with yes. her Youngins, the youngins, yes. and they took her there, they and took me there. It, all y'all kind of thought it was mid. Yeah, we thought it was like, ah, and it was it was very Vuv flo- focused, right? Vuv Clico. Yes, it was everywhere. It was yes, it was everywhere, and I was like, uh, I really don't want my mimosa with Vuv, but I understand that that is a thing. Some people are now doing mimosas with champagne and calling it a grand mimosa, right? Um, but this was a whole different dining experience. We sat outside. We had a terrace seat. Beautiful views. Beautiful views. The of water. The, of the Potomac. D.C. D.C. It was you, nice. It was you dope. You could see the monuments. You could see National Harbor. You could see the planes taking off. You could see everything. It, yeah, was, it was really dope. nice. It was clean. It was a clean look. And, they, you know, they, you know those Instagrammable spaces? Yes. They have a small wall tucked away that you can go get your little Instagram photo. Yes, you can. You can get Instagram thing oh, there. Oh, please send that because the girls asked me, can, can we get an outfit pic? Oh, okay. <laughs> the girls yeah. asked for it. Yeah. yeah. But it was great. It was they really attention to detail um the chairs outside the umbrellas covering the spaces so that you can sit comfortably and dine out of the sun but yet you're still outside there was a magnificent breeze flowing for us a beautiful breeze a beautiful breeze um so you want to do a modified review real quick just a a, out of 10 what would you give them oh i would give them a a solid 10 okay yeah i agree i I um i'll give them a nine nine. out of 10 because there was no music oh yeah there was. it would have been nice to have some little tunes maybe it was only on the inside probably probably so and so listen let's say nine and a half because probably they were playing music on the inside yes but outside i didn't hear any music and it would have been nice to have a little vibe it would have the you know music wise the vibe was set the vibe was definitely there you step out and they also had green grass on the ground, yes, like they had like a turf, tarp, turfy, turpy, tarp. What is it? Turf, turf, like turf, like they football had turf. Turf oh. all out there. You could have kicked your shoes off and just <laughs> put your feet <laughs> down. Yeah, the whole patio the was covered whole in that, like patio artificial was turf. Covered. It was dope. And I'm telling you, last time I was there it was not like that. So I really <laughs> you kept saying this. No, it wasn't like this. It wasn't like because this. listen, Trina, like when she has a not so great experience anywhere, she'll never go back. There I don't want to go back. And I'm like, yo, you you gotta try again because you never know. It might have just been a bad day. Anybody could have a bad day. Yeah. It just could have been. You could have been off. Mm-hmm. It might not have been the day for that, but you forced it. Whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Try it again. And if it's bad again, yeah, then you know, what I'm saying you cut your losses. And that's but it. The, this was great, and I highly <sighs> recommend the lobster Benedict. Oh yeah, you had that lobster. I can't eat that, y'all. That shellfish would kill me. Listen, it's about two pounds of lobster on a plate. Okay, <laughs> there's so much lobster meat. If you are a lobster lover, do it. Yeah. You yeah, do it. it's, yeah, it's so I, worth it. I had the breakfast burger. The potatoes were <sighs> litty. Listen, the potatoes were so good. Who's on potatoes? Because the seasoning, the seasonings, they put every spice you possibly could put on a potato. They, the potato, and they are like butter. Like they just melt in your mouth when you, when you cover put them in, in spices. Them. Not salty. No, not salty at but all. Actually. Seasoned. Yeah. You know, like somebody who works in that kitchen knows how to use seasoning. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. The lobster was great. The potatoes were great. The biscuits. The biscuits were really were good. Were great. And we had a rosé lemonade. There you go. That's where I was going to go next. Yes. Y'all, rosé lemonade mix. Get the bottle service, y'all. Just get the bottle oh, service. Oh, yeah. Get yeah. The bottle. We bought a bottle for $45. Yeah. And then, you know, just brought the, the lemonade out and we just oh, mixed our. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It's dope. 
It was great. Dope experience, man. Very. Shout out to them. You know Bravo what I mean? to you. Shout out to Julie's on the Potomac, yo. We like it. We like we it. We could do an event out there. That would be uh, an we, event out there would be fly. Oh, it'd be super duper fly. We just need y'all to get, commit a little bit more to this relationship. <laughs> Some of y'all committed for sure. Yeah. We need a little bit more of y'all to commit yeah. to this relationship. Y'all love us. Just admit yeah. it. All the watchers <laughs> and all the listeners. Oh, man. You know, drop a comment if you want to come to our brunch. You look great. Thank you. The yellow is just crushing like all against your skin. Thank you. I understand that bright colors work for black women, and so here we are. Yeah, you look great, man. I, Thank I love you. it. I love the, the bracelet. I like that the one on your left hand there. That's that's. Oh you know what I'm saying? That's a little my 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 clip. beads, my BD bracelet. Yeah, and you look a little different. What is this, <laughs> it's something about you? <laughs> something about you. What, what am I? What's going on? What am I missing? What, am there, I missing something? There are no braids in <gasps> my hair. No braids. So oh, that's right. You oh did have braids gosh. before, didn't you? After six months of trying to figure out what the hell am I doing with my hair, here we are. This is the black woman delegation part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> this is where y'all relate. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's a journey. So so this particular cut that you have, uh-huh. it's not really the cut. Right, because I got to grow it out a little more. But it's on it's the pathway to, to a cut that you held in your uh picture you held in your phone for how long baby you want to tell the people 10 years 10 <laughs> years you held on to this photo i didn't want to commit i didn't know what my hair could do i didn't even know what my own curls look like in my head until the other day wow i've never because before i i would grow it natural but i would immediately start locking mm-hmm. so you figure I've done two rounds of locks, a total of 20 years. And I didn't know what my own natural hair curl mm. looked like at all. And so this was a, a process of learning. Shout out to Ayana at Outdo. Hold on. Before salon. we keep going. So you off the creamy crack right now. I am off the creamy crack. Oh. <laughs> I'm all for a black woman getting off that creamy crack. Keep Correct. going, baby. Go ahead, Yes, baby. because we don't know. I mean, honestly, we don't know what the medical implications are of us putting a lie-based or whatever chemical on our heads and our brains are really, really mm-hmm. close. It's pretty close to your brain, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I'm not preaching against yeah. perms. Y'all oh. do what y'all want to do out there. And don't sleep. You know, in six to nine months, I you might, might be do like, it again. you know what? I was just perming out Yeah, again. yeah. But um, it was it was important for me to, to do this and to just learn. And Ayana is a really fantastic teacher. That's your hairstylist. The hairstylist. My hairstylist, Ayana, in Maryland, in Glen Arden, Outdo Hair Salon. Um, she was just a really great educator. Mm. She was teaching me about my hair. She was telling me about products and products that have a whole bunch of crap in them that you can't pronounce. Oh, yeah. Versus natural products. She actually has her own line of products. Mm. Um, and so it was really, really good to just learn about my curl pattern, um, first of all, you know, your girl can't go nowhere without a good color. So we had to get the color right, okay? Because if right. the color wasn't right, I wasn't walking out this line. The color's okay? perfect, yo. It looks the color dope. is thebomb.com. And, yeah, this is this is a new journey. And I'm, I'm looking forward to giving my hair a chance and having some patience. Okay. Indeed. Shout, Which, out, to, shout out to the new wife, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got me a new wife, yo. You got a new Another wife. Another one. You got a new wife, as you so politely posted on Instagram. Oh, yeah, she a freak. The new wife is a freak. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it feels really good. Like, I got ready today in, like... Yo, I was sitting out here, like, I didn't even do no video for my sneakers or nothing. She ready to go already. I was ready. The dress was laid out on the bed. I was ready like, to okay, go. I'm ready. Bang. Yes. That's Just a beautiful a thing. Yo, shout out to you, man. Yeah. It looks great. It looks great on you. I'm excited about the journey forward. Thank you. I see my whole face now. <laughs> right. You know, you don't really, you can hide behind hair. You Like, you totally can. You can hide behind hair or the hair gives you, like, a whole silhouette. But when you pull all of the hair away, it's just your face. Yo, let, and shout out to the braids, though. You you, yeah. you crush the braids. I love yo. the braids. Great. Yeah, you crush the braids. And I could yeah. go back to those at any time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. You might have to grow it out a little bit more, though, now, right? Yeah. You on know, the side, the, on the side. But if you just want to do the top, I could just. That's true. That's true. You can do the top. Yeah. You, want. you can do whatever you want to do. Yeah, man. it's dope. So I love it. 
Thank you. Thank you for being supportive and telling me just do it. Did, listen, do as it. soon as you showed me that photo that yeah. you said you had been holding around nine years before you met me, because it wasn't a, it was a more the eight years because it was a two years into our relationship yeah. before, before you showed me or more. Yeah. And I'm like, do it. Like, yeah. what do you have to lose? Like, black is beautiful. That's the reality. You know, black women are real serious about their hair. And we're attached to our hair. And I've been getting relaxed for the last 10 years. I was natural before that. And so I'm not new to natural hair. I just had locks. And locks are a whole different set of things. It's the length. It's the growing. It's yeah. the, you know, your hair grows fast. My hair grew really fast with my locks and the right. maintenance. And if you choose the color and taking care of them and getting retwist. So I didn't want to go down that journey again. I've, I've done it. I've done it half my life. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. So it was just a really good time to just learn something new. Find a new vibe. I'm proud of you, man. You're trying some new things. You know Thank what I mean? you. Thank you. It feels, <laughs> it feels good. It feels really, really good. There's a lot of freedom. It's a, it's an interesting thing that. Um, sorry, not adjust my mic real quick. Pause. Uh -huh. um, I don't know what to call it, but the whole uh, some people are content, like not content, but they'll they'll they know what they like. And they'll stick there. They'll stick there. Yeah. And I, I guess I'm kind of like that in ways, but in a lot of ways, I'm like, let's just try this completely new thing. Yeah. And the the money that you might invest into it or spend on it mm -hmm. is worth the experience, whether it's good or bad. Right. Then, oh. then you, you know what I'm saying? You had the experience at least. Right. Whatever. So I'm just like, yo, just, just do it. Why not? Yeah. Let's, let's, we're let's, just, let's go, we're yo. very conditioned with our hair about how we're going to be received how our look is going to be interpreted, mm -hmm. how revolutionary or anti-establishment natural hair has been. But now at this point, natural hair is like the wave. Whereas when I first did it back in college and just totally buzzed it off and was rocking the genre for about mm. six to nine months, it was like, oh my gosh, what's going on with you? Are you this? Right. Are you that? You know, right. like all these labels and all these things where I was just, nah, I'm just, Shaving my head. Good you. You so, you so dope, yo. Thank you. Shout, I, shout I out to you. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Thank you. I love it. Thank you. I love it too. It feels good. I mm -hmm. love the color. I love. <coughs> I love. You know. Shout out for new earring shopping, so that I can have earring more shopping. statement earrings. And shout out to my face and my dimples and my freckles and all the things that are popping right now. As hey, a, look at you. As a result of. Take I can't even go outside with you no more. <laughs> These compliments, people. You know what I'm saying? Watch it. Y'all better watch it out there. You know <laughs> Old white men, young black women, all types of people. It's crazy. <clears throat> yeah, you know. Well, we're here now, man. We you know are. We're here. We're here. Um, you know, it's been summer. It's summertime. Yes, it is. We're officially in summer, and um, there's been a lot going on. Like we. Like we spoke about in past episodes, we sat down for six months to save up money and do all these other things, whatever, you know, yeah. just to get kind of build a little nest. And we we got out of that and just been, I mean, just <laughs> shooting from the hip. We're not even taking the guns out the holsters, y'all. We just we just bam, tilting it up. Bam, 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 bam. Whoever get hit, you get hit. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and, <laughs> and there's been a lot going on after you no know, after we came out of that sit down like trips. Planning trips, moving around here and there. Mm -hmm. So our schedule has been kind of jacked up mm -hmm. with the pod. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't been consistently putting them out every single week. Mm -hmm. So just want to give a heads up. Yes. When you hear this, the next week there will be no pod. Because we're going to be in the street. We are going up to <laughs> Rochester to visit family. Shout out to my family. Hey. You know I mean? um, and we're also... We're also shooting up to Canada. Yes. You know what I mean? To do hey. our little um, Niagara Falls thing. You've never been. I've never been. I went as a child, so pretty much I've never been. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's funny that it is. Rochester is an like hour and a half from there, but mm -hmm. it's been forever since. And I left in 94, so it's yes. been a, a long time. And then we have um, a couple of weeks after that. Now we get back. Oh, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, we'll have a we'll have a pod. Then we'll have another pod, mm -hmm. and then the end of the month we're out again. Right. There and will be no pod again. There will be no pod again. We are going to Anna Maria Island. Are you telling me? Anybody gonna be there? 
Ain't nobody gonna be there. Ain't nobody gonna be there. Ain't nobody gonna be there. Yeah. Um. So we we are going on vacation again, <laughs> and then after that, hopefully we can get some consistency. Yeah, for the fall. I think we we might want to just start doing a summer schedule, mm-hmm. or, or something to that effect. Just do like two a month, and that's it. Something something like that. Two pods yeah. a month, and going about our business. Just to make sure, just to manage expectations and so on and so forth. So. Yeah, because we want to go on vacation just like y'all. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, it's a lot to do. It's a lot to see out there, mm-hmm. and we are blessed to be in a position to, um, you know, experience these things. Absolutely. So when you see me. <clears throat> Hopefully not with my ass out on Instagram. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> well, we said hopefully not. You didn't. You wasn't. I was. I was. I was okay. Like it. it just you know. The I first was, time I had. I already done it before. I so know. look, look, y'all, look, y'all. All right, <laughs> let's not lose our audience. Oh, I'm sorry. So I posted a video yes. on Instagram, Throwback Thursday, from two years ago. From two years ago when we went to Costa Rica, yes. and um, you know, my, my wife was looking amazing in a bikini, and I uh, walked up behind. The, it was a bikini, right? No, it was okay, a one it, was piece. A, it was a one piece, but it's kind of like you yeah. know, I'll back out and all that kind of stuff. It looked like it's uh, a bikini, and we were in a we were in a pool like we had uh what is it called an infinity pool. At the the um the house the house that we were staying at, and it overlooked the ocean and all this other shit. So it was yeah. it was a vibe. We had our bubbly and shit. We was feeling it. We was feeling great. We was feeling great. Yeah. And I walked up behind her and I recorded her or whatever, and I made a big deal about how <laughs> you good she looked. Recorded my bum. The booty, right? The booty's there, right? So I had posted that years ago. Yeah. And you had this the same reaction back then, like, "Oh my God, you were great," but you but you were cool with it. Remember, I was yes, like, I was, "Are you okay with this?" Right? Yes, you did ask me, "Was I okay with yeah. it?" And I and I'm trust me, I'm okay with it. It just if I was flustered, like I didn't know you back were, then or now, both right. So you just compl- get same exact reaction this what time as it was before. When you see your ass on Instagram like oh, that, you're like, "Oh, whoa, 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 whoa." Yeah, <laughs> too funny, man. So yes, you got um, you know, you got a couple of threatening uh, <laughs> messages and reactions. You want to expound from, on well, these things from the two that I birthed, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the ones that I carried. Um, I was advised that mom, oh my gosh, mom, mom, mm-hmm. mom, why am I seeing you naked on Instagram? And I was like. I wasn't naked. What are you talking about? Mom, why did I just open my page and see your butt? You know, like Mm -mm -mm. stuff like that. Oh, my gosh. Unfollowing respectfully. Right. Um, So, you know, they were a little, you know. (laughs) So it led to the topic, though. They're a little stuffy. stuffy. A little (laughs) stuffy. And and that goes to uh, that is a, 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 a. a note to me as to how I raised them mm. for the expectation that they're not going to be all on Instagram with their tatas and a booty all over Instagram as respectful young ladies. Yeah. It's not necessarily about what you do. It's about how, how you, do, you it. do it. Right. And so my children were scolding me. And then when we talked to one to ask her, well, well what's the problem? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what's what's going on? What's the actual I'm problem? With my husband in the pool. I, I'm not like I'm not just like standing in the bedroom and putting my booty in the camera. Right. We're not twerking on top of the counters. Yeah, we were actually in a pool. Like that's what you're supposed vacation. to wear in the pool. So what is the problem? And she said to me, "Well, mom, you're not supposed to be sexy." She slipped it out. Like, I called her on it, too. It, I was, was like, like oh. yeah. And then when she said it, she's like, oh, no, well, I didn't mean That's not what I meant. I was like, no, it's too late. It's too late. Yeah. So, yeah. So, are moms not supposed to be? Are parents not supposed to be sexy? Are we not supposed to be out here living our best lives right. once these kids get up out the house? Listen, man. This ain't back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to be sitting at home on a couch in a muumu with a bucket of popcorn and my head scarf and being all dark and in the doldrums. I'm about to be in the outside. Streets. I'm about to be outside. The, our our outside. Not all of yes. y'all outside. Not our the, outside might. Not, nobody swag serving over our potatoes. Yeah, no. we, we might be at a villa. 
in another country <laughs> yeah. with an infinity pool and a view doing what we do because we we're married. Yes. We're having Thank a you. good time. Mm-hmm. But apparently, according to my children, uh, that's too much. It's I'm too, doing much. too much. I'm doing too much. You're supposed to be at home, not on the internet, period. My whole body is supposed to be covered up, apparently. <laughs> Hilarious, yo. <laughs> That was hilarious, man. It was. So, I mean, I would love to hear from everyone else. Do y'all get this type of feedback or pushback? And do you feel like parents aren't allowed to be sexy and live their best life once they become empty nesters? Like, what are we supposed to do? Right. Yeah. And or just be sexy or cool in general. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I remember when Kennedy went off to school. The first thing she said to me was, you be outside too much. Too much. Too much. You 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 outside way too much. And then their friends be loving you. Yeah. Because you're the fun <laughs> and parent. they following cool. me. They follow me. And they tell me, don't tag them. Because they don't want their friends to go follow me. Hilarious, yo. It is quite a thing. It is. A, it's quite the spectacle. It's, yes, quite the spectacle. Yeah, it was fun, though. But you know, so mean, we having fun out here. I, I already said just you you prepare to be sick of me because when Florida comes, I'm an extra straight. Forget about fool. it. Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, white sands, clear water. Hello. Come on, man. I gotta pick some swimsuits out. That reminds me. Part of, you know, these wondrous things with these wonderful young adult children we have, um, are our graduations and all these things happening. And last weekend I got to chill at home with my youngest mm. and you went on a nice graduation present gift with yeah. your baby. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, um, shout out to Todd, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We celebrated him before he graduated college. Hey. Got his degree. One of the best graduations I've ever been yes, to. Yes, yes. We talked about that in an early <laughs> episode. Go check this out. Yes. And um, as a gift to him, Initially, um, I wanted to take him out. He wanted to go somewhere where I wanted to take him on a trip, mm-hmm. right? So when I when I approached him about the idea, he just wanted to go somewhere where he can take a lot of photos, right? Mm-hmm. And which is like anywhere, but you know, some places are more picturesque than others. Mm-hmm. And so I had been to San Francisco a couple of times, right? In in my past, so I was like, oh, I'm taking him to San Francisco. I know he wanted to go to L.A., but I know L.A. is kind of. I didn't really want to do that at that moment. Um, San Francisco has a lot of beautiful architecture. Mm-hmm. Um, the you know Lombard Street, the crookedest street in the world, all these other things, whatever. The Japanese Tea Garden, it's a, it's a lot out there, right? However, upon I remember hearing about San Francisco having mm-hmm. a major problem with homelessness yes. and all these other things, so I started looking it up because it's been many years since I've been. Mm-hmm. And when I looked it up, um, basically the homeless problem has gotten worse. Um, and then on top of that, the economy has been hit. So what is it? Union Square, I think it's called, where I used to stay, where all the high-end stores and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, the Fendi, the Goyard, the, the mm-hmm. Prada, all these all the stores were, a lot of those stores are gone. And wow. they just like, you know, boarded up or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So a lot of, it's not what it was. So I said, well, you know what? Um, Austin, Austin is a place I had never been. Okay, It's a place he had never been. And let's let's go experience Austin. I heard a lot of good things about it. I heard nef- nothing but good things about it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I took Taj to Austin for his graduation trip, and it was a hoot. <laughs> yes, lot. A, go a ahead. Food hoot. It was it, a lot of food. <laughs> um, Austin is rich in. Uh, it's this thing called keep Austin weird, right? So oh. it's different. It's different. Um, it's there's a hippie element. There's a gothy element. There is a um, there's the music. There's the food. Mm-hmm. There's drink. Right. Wow. It's everywhere. Wow. Right. So you can barely get through a neighborhood without some of those homes. Like it's homes, 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 and then all of a sudden it's a home, but it's a bar wow. or a restaurant. It's like someone has bought this home and converted it mm-hmm. and whatnot. Um, Austin. We learned a lot on the trip. Like it used to be um, flat, mm. right? It used to be a, a, an ordinance in place where you couldn't have a building higher than the Capitol building, which is about five, six floors or something to that effect. Mm-hmm. Now that ended in 2005. So now you have skyscrapers, okay? right? Uh, and 
not Manhattan. We're not talking about 200 something Florida right. or whatever it is. But they have a 77 floor building going up in Austin right now. That's crazy. And the whole skyline is filled with cranes. Okay. Right now. It's just things just going up, going up, going up. Wow. So they have plenty of high rises. Mm-hmm. Their downtown is popping. You look at it and you think that, wow, this all happened from 2006 on. That's crazy. It's not that long. No, it's not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. However, they've done a good job with maintaining their identity okay. so far, right? <laughs> so far, because I looked up, we stayed in the JW Marriott. We were on the 25th floor and right out of our, we have a huge window right in our room, right out of the window was a, a condo right there. And I'm like, I just wonder how much this condo cost. I looked it up and it was like for three bedrooms, was like $12,000. Mm, wait, <laughs> for sale or for rent? Uh, it was for rent. Excuse me, okay. pardon me. For rent, twelve thousand for a month. Yes. Oh. Right. It's so the like one bedroom me. joint is like four thousand and some change. Oh, so the particular sh- one I looked at was a corner unit though. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. spacious yeah. and all that. Wrap It was crazy. That they, they look nuts. So Austin's popping. Um. So we get there though, and you know we call the Uber and all that, mm-hmm. and. He's driving us with our Uber driver ended up being this dude who he was a transplant. He was from uh, South Bronx. Okay. Right. So we all hit it off immediately and whatnot. He's telling us all the places to go. Go here for the barbecue. Go there. But the line's there for barbecue. If you don't go there, you don't want to wait in line. You go to this other spot. The barbecue's just as good, if not better, but you don't have to line. But I'm like, giving us all the jewels. Wow. So as we're driving, I was like, yo, um, so y'all got a question. Cause we were approaching downtown. And I said, um, all right, we're, I see downtown right ahead of us, and we just drove through an area, and I see a lot of homelessness. And he was like, oh, it's, it's all over the place. It's, it's crazy, but it's mostly on this side of the highway. On the other side of the highway, it's there, but it's nothing like over here. Wow. Or so I'm like, oh, here's that poverty thing. Mm. Here's that poverty line, mm-hmm. which we later learned, mm. I was I-35, I believe it is, okay. was put in to redline the neighborhood. Wow. Right, to keep black folks on one side mm. and keep white folks on the other side. Look up redlining if you don't know what redlining is. Oh, right? More things change. <laughs> they stay, they stay, stay the same. The same. <laughs> and, and, and it just shows you that these decisions that were made years and years and years and years and years ago still have impact today. Impact. Today. Mm. Right? So don't talk to me about, you know, slavery yeah. and all this good. The impact today. Right? So I was like, wow, there, there, there's that. So, um, so, you know, we moved around, man. We moved around. We had plenty of great food. Uh, I had a list of things that I want to talk to Taj about. Okay. As a dad, you know. Doing a dad duty. Doing a dad duty. I'm yeah. talking to him about, man, you need to be doing more. You need yeah. to do this. You need to do that. What you doing with this? What you doing with that? And um, through conversation with him, I mean, I was like, okay, he's on his shit. Hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, How about that? I'm crossing stuff off my list. How about that? I told him. I said, y'all had a list of stuff to talk to you about, but just through conversation, you let me know that you got your shit together and that, you know, it's just going to take time. Yeah. But you got your shit together. Like, you know, nice. you're doing your thing. Um, I'll forever be here to guide him. Yes. And lend, at, you know, give him advice, uh-huh. lend a hand, help him out if, if he needs it, uh-huh. so on and so forth, whatever, but... He's making a way for himself as an artist. He's a photographer in New York City, Ooh. in the surrounding boroughs. So if you want some uh, raw <laughs> film photography specifically done or digital, holler at him. Yeah, Bless, blessings to him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was dope. It was a great trip. We bonded. Uh, let me see. What else did I have to talk about? The Southern Hospitality. Uh-huh. How about that? We walking down the street, people speaking. Oh, such People a nice thing. Complimenting you on your outfit. Yeah. Your, your shirt or your hat or your sneakers. You get it. Yeah. You get it down here. People yeah. are always complimenting you on things. So some people just cross those barriers. It don't matter if you're north, south, <laughs> east, or west. But Taj was blown away because he lives oh. in New York City. He lives in Brooklyn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's rude. Everybody's rude. It comes with the territory. And it's not even like being rude. It's just culture. It's just the way it is. Like when I flew Lufthansa Airlines back in the day, going to, um, I think I was going to Germany or coming back. I, I flew it both ways. They were so, in my mind, they were so rude. Mm-hmm. But it's just the way, this yeah, is just culture. a German thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was the same. It, it's the same like that in New York City. But 
he was blown away with um, Austin and how nice people were. And he was, by the end of the trip, he was talking about the idea of living there. Hey. <laughs> right? One trip. Look at how one trip can change the whole, it could change his future. Mm-hmm. You know, it could change the the course yeah. just by the exposure yeah. to that new location. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to tell him not to. I'm, I encourage him to do whatever he feels like he wants to do. Yeah. You know, we already supported him being an artist. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That's what he is. So if that calls for you to go down to Austin, you're going to have a lot of competition. I'm sure there's a lot of photographers there. But there's so many events and things going on all the mm-hmm. time. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's a little slower. It's mm-hmm. nicer. Yes, everyone's walking around with guns. And there's a lot of racism there. It's Texas. Let's be clear. Yes. <laughs> we're not foolish they want to be their own country <laughs> yeah every now and then they try to succeed <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> however uh, you can find your little slices of mm. you know what I'm saying serenity or heaven or whatever within yeah. these types of we all do it we have to do it you have to <laughs> we have to do it yeah you know what I mean um let me see the heat yeah <laughs> <laughs> How's the heat in Texas? Yo, son. <laughs> you take a shower, you walk out the hotel, and the shower is immediately just thrown out the window. Oh. You're, it, you're, it's so hot. You're sweating. Mm-hmm. It just is what it is. Like, one day, Tosh took three showers in a day. Like, it's just, it just is what it is. This is Texas, man. You're... You're closer to the equator. The sun is sitting right on your shoulders when you go outside. So basically, you're telling me I'll be taking six showers a day. Oh, uh, yeah, you might. <laughs> you might, yo. You For some reason, you love the sun and the heat in Florida, any tropical area. Yes. But outside of that, you don't really be don't feeling it like it. that. <laughs> I don't rock with it. Mm-mm. I was surprised we lasted at brunch today with the half of the table the sunlight oh, hitting half of the table. Oh, it's good out there, though. It yeah. Felt really good. And I'm trying to get my tan on. You know, this color needs to be a little more bronzy. Indeed, indeed, indeed. <laughs> um, that's awesome, though. I'm yeah. really, I'm happy. You know, I think that that's, you know, a, a great thing. And, you know, next year it'll be my turn to yeah. do the same. And I just think that exposing our young adult children to other locales and other locations yeah definitely helps them it broadens their minds to the possibilities and i think young people now is the time to screw up try shit stumble fall stumble fall you can do all the shit right now and recover because you have like you're just responsible for yourself right now yep no kids no debt no this no that do it Go do it. Enjoy it. If you don't like it, great. You tried it. Like like you talked about. Yeah. You tried something different. And then if you don't like it, you can go back to what you know already. Yeah. And I think it's a great thing. It's a great thing. It's a beautiful thing, man. I love my son. And he loves me, too. And yeah. we have a great relationship. And spending time like that together just strengthens it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just makes it stronger. And um, it just gives more understanding and clarity. And, you know, I'm straight up with my son. It's like, mm-hmm. listen, man, you know, <laughs> he, he's he's such a nice person. Yes. I say this all the time. He's such a nice person, a considerate and thoughtful person. Yes. And sometimes that, you know, he'll like we, we're standing on a block. I'm about to call an Uber. We're standing in the sun. He said, do you mind if I go stand in the shade? I said, bro, <laughs> you're grown. Yeah. You don't have to ask me about where he was like, it's just habit, you know? Because you're habit. dad. I'm it's dad. I, I get yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? But go stand in the shade. Like, if I feel like I'm on to stand my dumb old ass in the sun and, and roast, you go stand in the shade and show me that's a better idea. I might follow you there. But, uh, you know, yeah. but it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's just interesting seeing this uh, this transition because, you know, he's not even 25 yet. So, yeah. you know, as as what, what's my man? Esso will say that the frontal lobe is not fully developed. It's not fully developed. It's Kennedy. Like <laughs> Kennedy says that too. Uh-huh. So, so, yes. Do you think that this might be something that you guys do every year? Year, like maybe take a trip for every other year yeah regular let's just say regularly whatever regularly. that schedule looks like yeah. i don't know if it'll be every year because mm-hmm. you and i have a lot going on um you know and these next few years gonna be kind of crazy but um yes we talked about that Good. when i was out there about because we went on the last trip we did was fort lauderdale together okay. you know what i'm saying we had a great time with that 
Um, he, he still remembers it, still talks about it. And um, so, yeah, he was like, you know, we got to figure out what we're going to do next. And he was, he was, funny enough, he was planning, um, he and his boys are planning a, a crew trip. I the first it. crew trip. Oh, wow. The guys that we met from brunch? I think some of them. Okay. Some of them, yes. All right. And um, he wants to convince them to go to Austin. Nice. You know what I'm saying? So South by Southwest is in March. And that's oh, a, that's for a young folks, thing. yeah. That's a big thing. That's a huge thing. The festival yeah. time, I mean, everything's going to be priced up. But, yeah. um, but you know, he's going to try to convince them to go to Austin. So nice. I was like, man, get y'all, a, get y'all an Airbnb mm-hmm. and, you know, kill it. Do it. One thing that, I'll, and I'll, we'll, we'll end on this and we'll move on. Um, He said to me that um, now that he's done with school, mm-hmm. he was like, um, you know, I'm trying to see what's up with the girls. And I was like, okay, that was one of my list to talk about. Like, because my son is not very, you know, he's not super, you know, out there like that. Mm-hmm. Thank like, God. I was wild as a child, guys. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, he's not me. And he said, uh, I said, so, okay. I said, so was it like a conscious decision of yours while you were in school? He said, yeah. He said, I was overwhelmed. He said, I was so busy with work, with schoolwork. He said, I, I'm, I just decided that I'm not trying to deal with no girls. He said, because I just was, was too busy. I, and I told him, I said, that was a very mature decision. Very. Very mature decision. Mm-hmm. I said, so it says a lot. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't making decisions like that when I was your age, bro. And not every young man in college is making those decisions. Some of them are just rolling the dice and seeing what Straight up. <laughs> Shooting the club up and everything. Yeah. Oh, gosh, Jesus. You know what I mean? Oh, so, Jesus. yeah, he made. He said he made a conscious decision to, to not do that. He had a couple little things here and there mm-hmm. and whatnot. He even had a long-distance relationship that didn't work out. Wow. Shorty was in Philly. He was wow. like, she came to visit a couple of times. I was like, did you ever go out there? He said, nah. I said, all right, cool. Like, <laughs> you know me. I'm like, yo, watch where you're busy. Yeah. And you know, that is, you know, long distance doesn't, it's yeah. tough to maintain that. So, Absolutely. Yeah, he's, uh, so he's ready to start seeing what's going on out here in the world. Oh, boy. He's in the right place. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. I just told him to keep an open mind, man, and go out there, be safe, and have fun. Yeah. Be safe. <laughs> be Please. safe and have be fun. Be safe. Yes. Maybe stay away from Houston and uh, and uh, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Those numbers and not look good. The numbers. <laughs> those numbers look funny in the light. Do kids ask the, the? Do they do the interview questions? Are they asking to see test results? Are, are they doing? I don't, I don't think doing? so. I don't think Ooh. so. I don't think Ooh. people. But I don't know. I'm not out there. I don't know what these motherfuckers doing. Yeah. So yeah, that was uh, that was dope, man. I just wanted to share the um, the awesome trip with y'all, man. That's Shout awesome. out to my son. And congratulations to you, because now. Hey. You have moved into the parental consulting division. Shout out to Tiff. Shout out to <laughs> Tiffany Sampson. You know what I'm saying? Tiff. So we were at the airport. When we got back to D.C., we were waiting for our luggage. Uh-huh. And he made it. He was going to spend the night and then go back to Brooklyn, uh-huh. uh, to New York City, excuse me, in the morning. Uh-huh. And then he said, man, I'm thinking about just heading back now. Like, well, should I just head back now, you know? And I was like, well, you know, it's up to you. I said, but if, I said, he was looking for a bus. I said, look for, you know, Amtrak. Look mm-hmm. on Amtrak for a train. And if you see something, let me know. And he was like, well, I don't really want to spend that much. You know, his, in his mind, yeah. his mind is not, it's not on me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He was like, I don't really want to spend that money. I said, no, I'm telling you that I got it. Like, mm-hmm. if you got it, find a ticket, I got it. So he found a ticket and I sent him the money. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And boom, he got his ticket. And I said, I put my hand on the shoulder. I said, my parenting is over now. <laughs> I'm now a consultant. Hey, this is it. <laughs> See, he started up. laughing. He started laughing. But you know, you know, that's how it is. Man. Yeah, gotta, they got trans, kind of transition into something. It's very hard. You know, <laughs> parenting is parenting adults is not easy. Once they turn 18, you're supposed to allow them to be the adults that they've grown into, but you're still parenting in a certain way. Yeah. And then once they turn 21, you're like, oh, uh, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, but I realize now I'm, I'm consulting. I shared a few, I shared a couple of war stories with him. Stuff, yeah. You know what I'm a couple Good. of, a couple of Miami trip stories with oh, him. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Gotta, 
You know, give them a little inspiration. Like, you know, the rappers drive the, um, they drive the Rolls Royce through the hood to show everybody they can do it too. Yeah. <laughs> so I just drove my Rolls Royce through his hood for a second. Oh, gosh. <laughs> she had a couple of stories oh, with him. You know, some laughing and all that good stuff, man. It was a great time, man. Great time. I'm really happy that you guys did that. Yeah, me too, man. Okay. Me too. Congrats. So, speaking of kids, right, cool. we have this topic that we've been carrying around, right? Oh, The yes. myths that we believed as kids. <laughs> the myths that we believed as kids. Folks was lying to us. We they, Not only were they, <laughs> some people were lying, and we were just, we we're dumb kids. Dumb and believing it. <laughs> How, have I ever shared with you? You know, I gotta save it. I'll save it. I have a theory okay. that, I, that I came up with, but okay. I'll save it. Let's do this first. Okay. Right? Some myths that we used to believe as kids. Okay. One thing that I'll go first. Do you have? Do you have some? You have a couple of them? Um. Because I got a whole website and everything. I did yeah. my Trina on this one. Uh, oh, oh. I got some well, research. I do have one. I do have one. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Quicksand. Yes. I thought that I was going to encounter quicksand at some point in my life. Didn't we all? <laughs> I thought I was going to. How many movies did we watch where someone was trying to reach quicksand and falling through the quicksand and then go under? I ain't seen nothing yet, and I don't want to either. But I want to know where is it? Where is the quicksand? Where is it? <laughs> Does anybody know where quicksand is? Does anybody know? Because I would love to know just where it is so I can look at it and understand that me. that's it and <laughs> don't go no further. Right. We saw quicksand. I never. I thought I was going to see that, but I never did. Oh my gosh! Dad's invincibility. Oh. I thought dad was invincible. That you Superman? Yeah, I thought he was Superman growing up. <laughs> Complete myth. <laughs> he was just reckless and endangering me. <laughs> taking me out on the damn water in a little boat neither one of us could swim. Oh my gosh. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a couple that I had, but I want to go to this list. But you can go ahead and be have to share something. Okay, so when I was mm. younger, they, we used to make mud pies. Did you ever make mud pies outside? Nah, I know what you mean. You know, you get the dirt and you yeah. mix it with the water, uh -huh. and then you can pull down some of the berries off the trees and put them in. Oh the mint. no! Yeah, we did that. What? <laughs> yeah, there were berries that that came off of these trees, right, and just off the bushes. And everybody said that if you ate them, you were gonna die. And so, of course, I never ate any of the berries because everybody would just say, if you eat those, you're going to die. Yo. And, I, and they were red ones and they were green ones that just, just used to grow on these bushes. And we would make the mud pies and we would have like a whole tray. So the way that they cook is you, you make the mud pies. You cook? Put, <laughs> you make the mud pies. And you sit them on like a, a two by four or a four by four, right? A okay. little wood. And you sit them out in the sun during, like, you make the mud pies early, like what 11. What do you put them in? Like a like a little um, pie pan? No, you just make them with your hands. And then oh, you, you just and, form and them. And smush them down. Oh. And you grab, like, some of the dirt would be, like, dirt, dirt. And then some of the dirt would be, like, sandy dirt. Okay, yes, up, yes. And you would mix it all together. And you grab a couple of the berries and mix it in the dirt. And you make, form the pie. This is fascinating. And you lay it down. And you put it out in the sun, like, at the height of the day, like, you know, 12 o'clock. Yeah, no doubt. 12 yeah. to 2. Yeah, there you cook, go. There you go. And then they dry out, and then you have mud pies, but you don't eat them. Right. What would y'all do with them then? Just, you just kind of throw them or something. Just just throw, them, throw them at each other. It's just something to do. It's just something to just throw them at each but other. But you thought in your mind that if you take a bite, you're going to die. You're going to die. Yeah. The parents, the parents told you that? Yes. My grandmother, my cousin, somebody. <laughs> somebody older told me that if I did, if I ate it, I was going to die. Here's 10 <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. I had that another one. That is fantastic. Go ahead. I had another one. That is fantastic. So when I was little, they would always tell me that if I turn the light on in the car, that I was gonna, that the police was going to arrest us. Yo, like they were going to pull us over. That. Is that, and that on the police, here? That the police were going to arrest us. And I see people driving around with the lights on in their car and nothing Ain't has nothing happened. happening. Nothing has happened to anybody. The whole family's in the car. Why with the did they on. say that? I don't know. But they that told me that when I was one, little. Yo. So I remember that. Me too. <laughs> Turn that light off. Turn that light off. Police gonna pull us over. Why would the police pull you over for that? I don't know. Oh my god. <laughs> ten ten myths you may have heard from your parents. Okay. Chewing gum stays in your stomach for five to seven years. Oh my gosh! Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Don't swallow that gum. Seven years. <laughs> seven years. Yes. Seven years. Who came up with the number? <laughs> Wait an hour after eating before you go swimming to before prevent you, cramps. Or throwing up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We only use 10% of our brain. 
This is false. It's not true. Well, how much of a percent do we use? Hey, man, listen, look it up. We're not Googling all that today. But we watched that movie where he didn't use that all movie. of it. And he unlocked the part of his brain. Yeah, with, uh, homeboy from, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you remember that movie? I forgot the name of it. Mm-hmm. It was Bradley Cooper, right? Yeah. There you go, Bradley Cooper. He took a pill and he opened That, that movie's brain. dope. Yeah, and he became like super smart. He knew everything and the mm-hmm. brain was like. It was a movie. Uh, it was a movie. It was a lie. Sitting too close to the TV will make you go blind. <laughs> uh, I gotta remember that. Uh-huh. I gotta remember that. Get back up from that TV. Back up from the TV. <laughs> That's the way it was delivered to us. Oh wait, wait, wait! I got another one. Go. When it's raining, get off the phone. Get off the phone. <laughs> you can't be on the phone. When that lightning is gonna come the through the phone. And lightning gonna cut the phone. <laughs> Yo, they told us anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, shaved hair makes bl- makes shaved hair grows back thicker and darker. Yeah, I've heard that. Yep, yeah, we used to hear that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they have one here. Sugar makes children hyper. Is a myth. I don't know. Hold on. This says false. Several studies have shown that sugar doesn't cause children to be more hyper. Some studies demonstrated that parents who thought their child was given sugar believed them to be more hyper. Even when they weren't given sugar, demonstrating the misconception parents sometimes have. However, sugar does affect behavior. A breakfast high in sugar has been shown in the result in, to result in severe deterioration of attention span when compared to no breakfast or a whole grain cereal. One study reported that children who, ha- who were given sugar had higher levels of adrenaline, a possible explanation for this misconception. Because higher adrenaline levels lead to symptoms similar to those of hyperactivity. So it's a little technicality there. Mm, okay. Oh, you're going to love this one. Okay, tell me. Trina, Marie, you're going to love this one. Tell me. This is the myth, according to them. Uh-oh. If you go outside with wet hair on a cold day, you'll catch a cold. That's a myth. Wait, what? Colds are caused by viruses. <laughs> You heard me say this so many times. <laughs> you do be telling me that. I'd be like, uh uh-uh. uh. Which you, you put on an undershirt. <laughs> when you catch a cold, which you can't get just from being outside in the cold. You may feel sick if you're outside all day in the cold or rain, runny nose, chills, fatigue, but it's not because of a virus. It's because you can experience the same symptoms when you are chilled as you as you uh, oh, as when you are sick. Wow. That's interesting, though. That, that, I get it. Okay. I get it. I, I can see how that could be a misconception. Beans. You lose most of your heat through your head. Yeah. They said that's false. <laughs> Here's a good one. All right. I'm going to say this, the last one first, and then the, the last. I'm going to say one for last. It's really good. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Myth. And didn't the Surgeon General say that? Listen. <laughs> No, it's all a sham. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. <laughs> USDA, Surgeon General, all that shit's a sham. All of it, y'all. I realize because they really don't regulate nothing. They ain't regulating nothing. <laughs> they ain't regulating. I was, I was watching the whole video on ground beef earlier oh, today. <laughs> Why? <laughs> one, it was the stuff that we see in the store, and the other one was actual ground beef that you get from you know a cow on a farm, so on and so forth, whatever. All the shit that they add in this US, USDA certified. Or, or, that shit don't mean nothing. Wait, they feeding us bullshit. All right, let's let's continue going <laughs> oh, because we're gonna derail this thing. <laughs> I watched a lot of Neil deGrasse Tyson. Why were you watching a thing on beef this morning? <laughs> Last. Cracking your knuckles causes arthritis. arthritis. <laughs> Shout out to our parents and our elders. Our grandparents, y'all lied to us. Plain and simple, y'all lied y'all to lied. us. So my theory, um, I've only shared this with one person, I think. Kids are only smart compared to other kids. They're idiots. <laughs> they don't know anything. They haven't experienced enough life. Well, no, they. They'll haven't. believe anything. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 
We are a living result. We're just showing you right now. We just went through a whole segment. But I believed it for the rest of my life, some of these things. <laughs> wow. They'll they'll believe anything. They kids, kids are stupid. That's the brainwashing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll believe anything. You tell them anything. I told. I was talking to Joe about it the other day. Joe's the only person I've ever told this theory to. <laughs> and he he shares it in conversation with tons of people that he's spoken to. This is my theory. They're, they're only smart compared to other kids. Wow. You tell Someone says, look, my kid got 100 on their test. I'm like, that's fifth grade math. That's crazy easy. But they're <laughs> in the fifth grade. That's right. Exactly. <sighs> you're only smart compared to other kids. Wow. Yo, man, shout out to the kids out there. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Love y'all, yo. <laughs> Love y'all. I'm afraid. <laughs> Very. I'm Back up in this piece. What else we got? What else we got? What else we, what's, what well, else going the on? other night was the presidential debate. Oh, God. So our our current um, Democratic representative, uh, President Joe Biden, and our current Republican representative, former president. <laughs> Donald Trump had a tete a tete mm-hmm. on, on CNN, mm-hmm. and it's just uh, this is where we are in America right <laughs> oh, now. Oh, it ain't pretty. <laughs> it All ain't I keep thinking pretty. about is Donald. Gl- uh, what's his name? Charles Gambino. This is America. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just up. Listen, <laughs> Donald uh, uh, Donald Trump is 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 Donald Trump as ever. And Joe Biden sleep. Oh, Jesus, help us. He doesn't know what's going on. Help us. Have you? Did you ever see that movie um, Bullworth with Warren Beatty? Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Um, that's the one about politics, right? I believe so. I can't remember. Yeah. I saw oh, that a long time uh, ago. Uh, wait, that movie. wait, is that the movie? I don't I can't remember. Baby. Okay, so there no, was a movie, movie about the political spin. And things that happen behind right. the scenes. I think that might have been that. It, it was that, right? It, it might have been. It's all good, okay. though. Okay. I I just, I just, I don't know what what the goal is right now. Where where is the where are the spinsters? Like what is the goal? Like what is the end game? If these are the two that we got up here in front of us, they, like what are we what are we supposed to do with this? The spinsters are there. So so on the Joe Biden side, uh-huh. right? so on the Joe Biden side, the spinsters are there. They've been spinning. They knew what was going to happen and they prepared for it. Because as soon as it was over, the next day we see. Obama tweeting, um, bad, uh, what bad debates happen, um, mm-hmm. but the rea- no, but Joe is still who Joe is. Mm. He tells the truth. Like this, mm. that's that's what they decided to go with. Okay, the, the yes. spin is there. they've been spinning for Joe, but uh, Joe Biden, <laughs> they've been spinning, yo. They're carrying him off the stage. They lead them off the stage by his arm. He don't he don't know where he's at. Joe Budden for president. Let's get <laughs> Joe Budden. In pre- just get Joe Budden in office. Forget it. I, I I just don't understand like if there's been um a a, a degenerative thing happening with Biden because of age, and I know that ageism is a thing and it's not very great or whatever. But if you just your if your senses are off, if your this is off, your synapters synapses whatever it is, I just don't understand. Why the party would not push for a repla- a better replacement for him who would probably poll better against Trump. There has to be a representative, a congressman, a senator or something or Kamala. I, don't, I mean, it's never going to happen because mm-hmm. America's black not ready woman. for a black woman to be president. Mm-hmm. But it, there has to be another way than him. It's too late now. It's not too late. They, it's for them to find another candidate and put the, him in place? The party could th- encourage him to step aside. Yeah. I don't it know. is it's not too late. Tough. You can put some, we can find somebody else to, t- or he could step aside and say, you know what? I think the president, the vice president, should move into. I, I just, I mean, but honestly, it's going to be a numbers game. Period. Yeah. It's listen, it's going this. to be who shows up, who gets out the vote the most. And comes out and votes for the if these two numb nuts are our options. You know what? On second thought, you might be right. Yeah, like if they replace him now, then 
some folks who d- said, I'm not voting for him. I'm not voting for either one of them. Right. Might go vote for the new person. Yes. You know what There's I mean? a person. And it's very unfortunate that there isn't even an independent, like we discussed yeah, in the, in the car, car. Yeah. that could be a possible option to pull the vote, to swing yeah. the vote in another way. We don't even have that right now. They don't have the money to campaign the right way. Where are all the and rich people who want to be president? Because <laughs> there's Donald a bunch Trump. of them. Do- well, Trump. is he really rich? I don't know. Um, who was the other one? The New York guy who wanted to be president. What was his name? I can't remember. Ba- uh, it's a, it's ba- a few of them. Ba- yeah. Like, where are all the rich white men who want to be president? To blow a few, to blow blow a few your millions own on your money. campaign? To mm-hmm. blow through your own money. To, be, to blow the... At least blow the race just to swing the race in another mm-hmm. direction mm-hmm. it's it's very unfortunate that this is where we are and these are the two people that we have and i don't want to be one of those people that say i'm not voting i believe in voting even though many say it's rigged and all these other kind of things and <sighs> yeah, the, the yeah. electoral college is a sham and all of that stuff but if we don't vote we know who is showing up to vote middle america is showing up to vote to, and that's, and that's, rural counties and city rural areas are showing up to vote and those areas primarily vote oh against yeah. my benefit if you know what i mean yeah so yeah um it's an interesting thing because we're not we people get stuck in the vote um, to keep something out, a party, yeah, oh, right? Okay. right, yeah, yeah. No, we don't want this, so we're gonna vote for that. Mm-hmm. And but I have a problem with that. I have a problem with when that is bullshit and that is bullshit. When it's bullshit on both sides, mm-hmm. like I don't, I don't have a loyalty to either party. I don't care about politics like that. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So I'm, yes. I don't, you know, call myself democratic or I don't call a Democrat or a Republican. I, I just don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I expressed to you before, I was ready. To, I was prepared to vote my interest, which was at the time my money, right? And mm-hmm. also, I was prepared to vote Republican. And then Trump <laughs> won the candidacy. And me being from where I'm from, knowing mm-hmm. about Trump, it's just no way I was going to vote for this dude. He's a right. piece of shit. Um, so I, you know, I voted uh, on the other side. Um, but this whole premise, though, I've been thinking about this, right? It's just. You know, black folks, there's they're this morality thing when it comes to voting, mm-hmm. right? They say that our ancestors fought for this, yeah, right? So you I mean, have a, lot a that was done to keep us to, from voting. Yes, and you have a, um, a, a civic record, duty, a duty, uh-huh. right? You owe this to your ancestors to go vote. Yes, in a, in a system like this, though, mm. does that does that does that still hold? Water does that still hold any water? That that premise that your our ancestors fought for this, so you have a responsibility to go out there and vote, and and specifically in a scenario like this. Well, I mean, as a student of electoral politics, I would say yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would say that there are so many things that even happened between the last election and now with gerrymandering and redistricting districts Mm -hmm. and moving poll sites, closing poll sites, um, technically designating people as ineligible to vote, saying that their registrations were invalid. There are several states that still have cases where they still haven't figured out the status on some people's votes that they submitted because there's so many little laws state by state that are being put up to keep folks from voting. Okay. And I think just because of that, for those of us who are able to vote, it's important that we do show up in, in order to just, you know, have the representation for those who aren't able to show up. Because I can tell you, I've sat at a poll and seen people get turned away mm. because the ID, they didn't have the right ID with the proper name or they were at the wrong polling site because the polling site has changed again and they don't even know where they're supposed to go vote. Right. Which automatically, when that type of stuff happens, nine times out of ten, the person doesn't go and figure out the space to vote. They don't go vote in the other location. They're just discouraged and they're they just discouraged go home. and they don't vote. And forget it if it's raining. Uh, there's a whole thing about how people don't come out to vote if the weather is bad. So you're saying that uh, the responsibility to vote 
is to um, f- further or push along the fight to improve the system. Correct. Not necessarily to get a candidate in there that's going to do something for anyone. I mean, what are these candidates really doing for us? I mean, uh, listen, I can I got to give Biden some credit. Like he's done some things on the, on the low. You yes. know what I'm saying? Some things that has to help a lot of people. I mean, there's a lot of folks walking around here with their student loans zeroed out because of Biden. This is significant. There's also a lot of folks who lost family members from COVID thanks to to Trump. Right. Thanks to the not closing, the not bringing a shutdown in sooner, not implementing the pandemic alerts sooner, and giving bad advice yeah. in press conferences like bleach. So, I mean... <laughs> It's a double, it's you, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You can't complain about what happens after the election if Trump gets into office, if you sat your ass on the couch and you didn't go vote, mm. you know? And if you do vote and you vote, you vote and, and, buy, and Biden wins and everybody's talking about he's mentally incompetent and should be declared unfit to, to rule, mm-hmm. then we get the vice president who steps in his place and America will be pissed because it's a black woman. Right. So it's like, like I said, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. But if you do nothing, then you can't really say anything. Mm. You're just sitting there. You just, I, I mean, I would... I, you know, I think that the four years of Trump presidency showed the nastiness and the ugliness of the country and it allowed the um, racists to feel really comfortable in their skin and to just be like, you know, driving around and antagonizing people. I lived in Florida during the Trump presidency and the folks that decided to put the Trump flags on the back of their trucks and drive all around town and turn up their music and look at you and be like, four more years, four more years. I experienced that firsthand. And there was a certain level of mm, discomfort because the racism was very, you know, it was there. Overt. It was overt. It was in your face. And those of us who know, we know. If you experienced it, you experienced it. Yeah. And I, I, you know, shout out to expat op- options of going to another country and living if, you know. Okay, so, all right, I had somewhere I was going to go, but you just, perfect transition right here, right? It's perfect mm-hmm. segue. So, I have a question. Yeah. Right? Um, let's say, um, you know, Hillbill- Hillbilly Bob or Mr. I don't give a fuck about black people or anybody else wins, right? In, in they're in office, right? Mm-hmm. So they got all the judges, they mm-hmm. got the presidential mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. Everything is swing. It's their way right mm-hmm. now, which is probably where what's gonna end up happening. Mm-hmm. But everything is their way, and they say, "Hey, black people, y'all been asking for reparations, oh. and we have come up with a plan." Oh, please, right? Basically, the the take your ass back to Africa plan. Mm. They say, "Look." You can get a house. What we looked it up. You can get a house built in Ghana at the time that we looked it up with sixty five thousand dollars cash. Yes. You can get a home built in Ghana. Yeah. Right. They say each black person that wants to go back to Africa, mm-hmm. we will give you, let's say, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Tax free. You tax free. Mm-hmm. Right. You have. We have created this this system that will get you into getting your home built. But mm. we won't all these different. Things. We're setting you up. Mm-hmm. To go back to Africa, mm. and you have to denounce. You have to get rid of your citizenship, U.S. Oh wow! And go back. So we, d- does that mean we also don't have to pay the penalty for denouncing for relinquishing American citizenship? You're done. You're no longer American. Ooh, that's amazing. That's Would great. you do it? Yeah. Quick, boom! Hey, Shadi, this why, this why, this is why, right here. I would too. I'm out. You want me to go back to Africa? Cool. Set it up. That's Let's the reparations go. right there. Because we're gonna put the money into another country, and and take it and and go live somewhere. I would love to live somewhere where racism wasn't at the front of my brain Straight every up. five seconds, all the time. Absolutely. That's a question for y'all out there. Mm-hmm. If y'all listening, I want to hear those answers. Yeah. I will be on the first thing smoking. 
And the continent of Africa has many locations where yes. you can live. It's not just Ghana. It's not just Liberia. It's not just the western coast of Africa. There's South Africa. Well, they say there's, South Africa is just like this, though. Yeah, apartheid was. <laughs> um, there's East Africa. Yes, there's, there's you know, plenty of there's places. Northern. You know, there's so many other places that are developing. And you, hey. <laughs> Ain't gotta ask me twice. Listen, you ain't gotta tell me nothing. Here's Adios, my, here's yo. my passport. Yep. I'm I'm good. I'm out. And I ain't gotta pay to relinquish and I don't have to pay no penalties. Nope. And it's tax free. Give me a house built. <laughs> <laughs> don't have to eat the food that's killing me here listen, anymore. Listen. <laughs> listen. I'm good. Yo, yeah, man. I'm good. Oh, that was good. That was I'm good. Good, good, good stuff right I'm, there. I like I, it. I like I, it. I, I mean, it's mm. it's unfortunate. <laughs> this is what we got. And do you think that there should be term limits or age requirements or fitness in order to run? There should be term limits. Uh, term well, limits there are in, con- term in, limits. in Congress. There should be term limits yes. in Congress. There are term limits on the presidency. Yes, the presidency is four think, years, of course. Um, I think there should be um, some, you know... I, I hate to say ageism type things, but I think there should be some cognitive testing in order to ensure that a 90 year old dude isn't up here running the presidency. I mean, the thing, the thing with, with Biden, I mean, there's 90 year old people who are very sharp on this shit. Absolutely. The thing with somebody like Biden is that we saw him, his health, go down yes. during his presidency. Yes. So what do you do in a situation like that? You can't just snatch You don't just snatch him out. Like, well, you know, what that's mean? what the vice president is there for. Right. I'm just saying, I'm just saying if, there, if there's a system that's saying that we're going to be checking your health and shit like that. Well, actually, you know, they are doing? supposed to check his health. So they know right now he gets an annual presidential physical to, sh- to check on his fitness. Yes. And of course, they're going to say that he's fine because that's what they're paid to say. Even if they said he wasn't fine, there's yeah. nothing in place that t- that's going to take him out of office. Is there? If he's unwell mm-hmm. and unable then they got to make the, a, articles, the vice president step up. The oh, articles right, say cool. that the vice president steps up. So, um, yeah, there should be term limits um, mm-hmm. in Congress. Um, you should not be able to run for president if you are a, a felon. And I'm only saying, I'm saying that because they restrict felons from doing all types of other shit. Felons can't vote. You can't vote. If felons can't vote, then how is a felon going to be president? In many instances, felons can't even be on a ballot. In many states, he won't be able to be on a ballot. This is where folks who don't read the Constitution or interpret the Constitution to their benefit (laughs) lose out. This is when you get you're able to stack the 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 Supreme Court in a way that they're going to look at the 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 Constitution in a way that benefits you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he should not technically be able to run, and states could really challenge it if they wanted to. Yeah, but they're not they're gonna not because gonna. they're so scared. Yeah, they're so scared, and not enough people who are knowledgeable in constitutional law want to even do the dance yeah. that it takes to get it done. But he shouldn't be eligible. And many people, many scholars, there's a couple of articles. The Atlantic wrote a huge piece on the constitutionality of whether Trump should be allowed to run for president and they mm. kind of buried the story mm. it's very in-depth it's very detailed and uh, one of my old professors is actually quoted in another article about his ability his the constitutionality of him being able to run mm. and you know what america um relies on in the is the dumbness of americans and them not being aware yeah of that's, the Constitution. That's I, I used to drive around with a, uh, a copy of the Constitution in my car. Did you? Yeah. Wow. Kept it right in my glove compartment, yo. That's why we. Listen, man. That's why we. Yeah. Like, my copy of the Federalist Papers is 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 <laughs> back there. <laughs> right. Like I mean, <laughs> that's that's deep. You tell me shit. There, there's a lot of people who don't even know what's in the Constitution. We all had to go to school and learn about it, mm-hmm. but the yeah. All right, man. Let's get out of this politics shit. Okay. Do we, do we care that Rosa Parks' husband had a car? I want to know. Did he really have a car? Let's just say he did. Let's just say he did. <laughs> <laughs> this is just straight humor, yo. This is straight. I well, think it's shit. hilarious. <laughs> 
that Rosa Parks husband had a car. I think it's hilarious. Well, shit is all I can say. Cause like, what do you do with this? <laughs> Nothing. What do you do I, it's with all jokes. Right just now? if you're not just cracking jokes with this, yeah. then you're doing too much. Yeah. Because <laughs> people, there's couples with one car. Yes. One person takes a car somewhere. The other person got to catch a bus or catch he a train. Had or whatever. to go to the plant and work. Maybe he was at work. He was at work. Maybe she had the car the day before. He said, "I right, now it's my turn to have the car. You go catch a bus. I caught the bus yesterday." Listen. <laughs> but I can't. the idea that Rosa Parks' husband <laughs> had a car is hilarious. <laughs> and the person who went to dig this information up, you ain't shit. <laughs> you ain't shit, yo. Come on, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Give me a break, y'all. Right, what, what Give else? me, see, what me a break. Have? Um, oh, um, go ahead. Jonathan Majors <laughs> last week received the Perseverance Award from uh Jason Lee's organization, the Hollywood Unlocked Person, whatever. That's what that was. This was not the NAACP, this was not BET, this was not any of those others. This was Jason Lee's organization. <laughs> he did this shit, Yo. he had people at this thing, he had Cardi there, he had everybody. What at else this did thing. they do? They did other stuff, they gave they do other, other stuff? people awards okay. too and stuff, but yes, good, good for him. You know what? Good for him, good yeah, for Jason Lee. Yeah, good for you, he, man. Do your thing, you gotta start somewhere. I've watched him talk about his story and move and how he got into all of this and i gotta give him that for just doing this thing the yeah. ability to work it the way that he does yeah. in hollywood but not only that but he had iyam levan zant present jonathan majors with the freaking award hugged him like, made him cry hugged him, rubbing his back <laughs> Get those spirits out. Yes. Rubbing the spirits out. And I was Wiping like, those spirits, the bad you, spirits away. What happened to y'all to fix my life? Because she would have called him a gutter snipe. She was fixing she, his life. <laughs> she was, if you ever watched her do the gutter snipe gutter thing, snipe. <laughs> listen, mm. how you not going to hold this man? A young hold on, what'd he do? He, well, he's domestic violence. He didn't he, do nothing. Listen. We all know that at this point. Listen, we don't know. What it was at this Listen, point. the law says the law says he didn't but do we shit. We also had a whole bunch of interviews from a whole bunch of other people, women, who said that he did put his hands we've, on them in pre in previous relationships. We've seen this play run a zillion times, so you don't know if it's true or not. We don't right? know if it's true or not. And making good baby, we waiting for you if you blink twice if you need to run. <laughs> do we believe them yet? <laughs> No. This is a long play. If they really run in a play, it's a long play. I feel like maybe she feels bad because she was the one that he was texting when this whole thing came about. Mm. If she's the one that caused all of this shenanigans do rob about, she's sticking by him <laughs> because she feels responsible for him losing everything. And she's loving on him and trying to be there for him because if that's the chick that he was texting in the phone. You ever see that um, YouTube video where the dude and his lady are in the apartment they get in an argument and she's leaving she's like I'm I'm leaving you and she's like you'll never find somebody better than me mm. this that and third whatever boom and she walks out the door and when she before she closes the door she looks back and he's already with another chick yeah that's Hollywood yeah that's Hollywood yo yeah they move they just move on they just these relationships just start <laughs> but they've been it's been Apparently a while now the, the relationship had already started mm -hmm. before mm-hmm and so mm -hmm. she's sticking beside him. I don't, do you believe him yet? Do you believe him? It's weird. You think it's real? It's weird. When you see the interviews, it's weird. Mm. It's real weird. Like the, the you have to say that you're in the happiest that you've ever been in your life. You're in love. And them doing the song thing on the red carpet at that awards event that Jason Lee had. Like the interviews, the, it's been weird. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what, what to say about it. And maybe they feel weird and maybe they don't really want to put the relationship on front street, but they have to because she was in court during the yeah. thing. And I, I just, I don't know. It's interesting. Like, it's weird. They still running the play. They still are. I don't know. Is it, is it real, y'all? Have you heard um, these um, Chris Brown, uh, Michael Jackson comparisons? Well, they've always been saying it, that he would have... More Michael Jackson comparisons if he never had the Rihanna issue. What song does Chris Brown have that we can compare to Human Nature? I don't know. 
What, what, what? I only know a couple of Chris Brown songs, and they're from the beginning. Whereas Michael Jackson, I know his a catalog from even when he was a little kid singing with the Jackson Five. So I don't know what song. Is he a great performer? Yes. Yes. Is he a great dancer? Yes. Yes. Is Talented. he a great singer? Yes. yes. And apparently he can rap. But then he can do everything. Basketball, yes. dancing, rapping. And he acts a little. Yeah. But I don't know about the Michael Jackson comparison. Like, what is why do people we do this. This is what we do, right? Yeah. We compare and uh, you know, at the end of the day it's different. Um, you know, it's, it's just different eras and all this other stuff. Yeah. Right? Maybe but they're we looking about, for their Michael Jackson of this era. But just just have Chris Brown. Like we have people like our age saying that Chris Brown is a Michael Jackson or he will be, you know, this level, whatever, uh, uh, you know, he's higher than Michael Jackson. And I'm like, are y'all just going off of the dancing and performing? Because music wise, like Michael Jackson touched souls. Like, did they not see the the, the pictures of the, in the videos of Michael Jackson looking out of his hotel room and looks like a concert of a hundred thousand people outside? Looking out. <laughs> what, I mean, what, I is don't, what does Chris Brown have the, the I don't know. to match up with this? I mean, he's a great performer. He's a great dancer. I like him. I love I just Chris don't Brown. Know, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if we're there, but. You know, it, he could be coming into it. Maybe he's coming into his Michael Jackson era. Maybe he's going to do some things that are going to be groundbreaking and what have you. Or maybe Usher. I've heard them say Usher is the next Michael Jackson type mm. of... I don't know. I th- how about we just leave Michael Jackson where he is and, <laughs> and not try to pull another one? Well, so he's so great that people have to compare to... Just like Michael Jordan. He's so great that everybody's uh, like, this is the next Michael Jordan. This is the next Michael Jordan. Uh, if you're not if you're not aggressive like Michael Jordan, then you ain't this and you ain't uh, that. You know, There's you, never going to be another Michael it's, Jordan. It's, it's over. It's, it's over. done. There's just Michael Jordan. It's just Michael Jordan. Yeah. And there's just Michael Jackson. There's just Michael and Jackson. And there's just And Prince. there will never be another Michael and Jackson. And there will never be. Look, Michael Jackson and Prince could never get it together. No. They could never be friends. There was never another James is. Brown. There was never another yeah. one. These are people, individuals. Hey. And that's it. It's almost unfair to compare these new acts. Leave our greats where they are. Mm-hmm. And stop remaking their shit. Uh, what else? <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? Um, this is a passing topic. WAC 100, which is the game's brother. Uh-huh. Um, bailed out Keefe D, which is a Tupac's accused murderer. What's that about? I don't know. That's an interesting thing. Yeah. I don't know what it's about. Y'all, if y'all know what it's about, please let me know. Uh, uh, we t- what are we doing? Uh, uh, I put was going to just over. say, I had one. Go ahead. Did you hear that Diddy got married in Hawaii last week? No, I didn't hear about that. Supposedly, Diddy married Baby Love's mother, Dana Tran, the cybersecurity analyst that um, had his last daughter. I haven't seen anything about this. Yeah, it's a lot. You think it's true? I don't know. If he did it, he could have did it for, you know, whatever. Did he Did he do it? I don't know if Diddy did it. <laughs> did he do it? Did he did it? Uh, it's still no Diddy. It's still did no he Diddy for me. You know, he know also he wiped his Instagram clean. Mm. He took everything down off of his Instagram page as well. Yeah, well, that's fair enough. That's Inter- probably the right move. Interesting. Yeah, Very we, interesting. We, we over that Is shit. Is he going to pop out with his wedding pictures? Still no charges. Still no charges. We supposedly had these grand jury testimonies happen back when the Rolling Stone article came out that next week. We still haven't heard them drop the charges on him. So I don't know. If he married, if he married Dana Tran, maybe that's to secure, I don't know, conjugal visits. I don't know. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Secure conjugal visions <laughs> is wild. Shit, I don't know. You know, if I probably if I got locked up, one of my main goals would probably be to secure conjugal visions. <laughs> yeah, get that's married. A good, but... That's that should be near the top of your list. Yeah, that's the only way you're gonna get them. Secure conjugal visions. That is great. <laughs> You did this before? I'm here all week. <laughs> here all week. <laughs> T-shirts in the back. Hey, margaritas too. Oh, uh, what else we got? We did the parents sexy mm-hmm. thing. Uh, Kendrick did this pop out. What I got versus what I ordered. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar. Yes, yeah, Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar. Let's talk about Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, Kendrick did this pop out. We got, we got like a, a minute or two. They not like us. They not like us. Can't stop they singing that like damn us. song. Yeah. Listen, Megan Thee Stallion was whopping her cheeks at her, <laughs> stay, at her concert. Like, listen, so good news about the song. 
Apparently, he's eligible for a Grammy. He might win, too. And he probably is going to win. And I'm happy. I'm here for it. Listen. Me, too. But. He wins this Grammy dissing Drake. Is this the demise? Man, that's crazy. Is this yo. the demise of Drake? How does Drake come back from this if Kendrick Lamar wins a Grammy off of dissing him and they not like us? I'll be I'll be honest. Like when all this was happening and everybody talking about Drake is done, I was like, y'all do realize that y'all just a small corner of, of yeah. society. Like people on, on the internet mm-hmm. talking about Drake is done all this. Mm-hmm. This guy's an international star, mm-hmm. and we don't know the level of attention that is being paid to this whole thing <laughs> overseas. <laughs> However, after the concert, I was like, mm. "Is Drake in trouble?" I don't know. Is he in trouble? I don't know. But because you have a bunch of people. I just don't understand why everybody hating them so much. The you know just seeing all those people on stage. Oh yeah, he unified the West. He yeah. had gangs, the the Crips and the Bloods on the stage. Man, you know I have a little bit of issue with some of that. I mean, but haven't we done this before? We all in the same gang. Yes, true but indeed, and before. that's cool. All them niggas being on stage, uh-huh. but it really felt all right. So we're this this let's go ahead and go here, and then we'll go back. Okay, we'll go back. Um, it felt like a celebration of gang culture. Like you watch it. Oh. It felt like a celebration of gang culture. Now, yes, these dudes were on the stage together, and I guess some of them might be, a, you know, a level of banging that's higher than others. Some <laughs> of them were just entertainers, all grown men. Yes. Except for the little boy who was being celebrated for his crip walking skills. It's just a it's dance. It's an interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a dance, huh? <laughs> so, uh, just watching it, I was like. This feels kind of interesting. And what Pause. we all do, we also saw celebrations of Black Boy Joy, like Russ, what's the Westbrook dude out here with his friend? Yeah, hand, they all do hand it. dancing and stuff. Like there was, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, but so on the other side. So I we don't, listen. We don't need to deep dive into that because yeah. it is a, it's an observation of mine. Okay. And my brain just kind of went there. Like, wow, it feels like a gang cel- a celebration of gang culture. But was Kedrick ever in a gang? I don't know about that, but it doesn't okay. matter though. He made the tune. They got the tune, and mm-hmm. it's clearly this is it's where, a West where Coast. Gone. It's a West Sea of Falia type of song. Sea of Falia, what's that, baby? West Side for Life. Sea of Falia. Yeah. Never heard that. You never heard West Sea of Falia? No. Okay. All right, damn. My West Coast friends, they taught me some things. Okay. But, I mm. mean, it, it, because I think the West Coast has felt like the East Coast dominates rap, and you got so, down South rap, and you got the, the deep down, the Texas, and all of that stuff, and that this was a, a moment for them to come up and – celebrate the fact that they got one of their own with the hottest song out and that this was just a moment i didn't even think about the gang culture celebration because i thought that they were celebrating the fact that the gangs were coming together like i said we already did we all in the same gang but maybe you know there's some peace and some less banging that happens i hope it i hope it you know just filters down into Mm -hmm. The ground level and whatnot. That would be a good thing. Like mm-hmm. I, get, I think gangs are stupid. Right. You know, as grown men, I mean, young kids. Well, that's one thing. You know, I, mean, I might have mm-hmm. been in the gang for like a day and a half. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? we started. We started a little gang when I was a kid. Jesus, we just started a gang, but it, it like it literally lasted probably like a week. <laughs> it was a wrap. <laughs> Nobody was about that life like that. Right. But um, you know, it, it, it yes, yeah, cool. You know what I'm saying? But. I don't I look. I'm not taking up major issues with it. Or whatever. I thought the concert was dope. Yeah, it was crazy. He mm-hmm. Kendrick. We I've seen Kendrick live before, mm-hmm. and he is have. amazing live. Just like he's on stage by himself for the majority of that concert. Mm-hmm. That's how he's on stage by himself the entire time, crushing. And the guy is a machine. That says a lot. It says a lot. It's a. Oh, it was amazing. Because you know rap, you, you got like a bunch of dudes rapping a song. Mm-hmm. They doing this, you they they rapping entourage. to the mic, putting the mic to the to the all, all that not all the entourage, all that nonsense. He didn't yeah. do anything. He just needs to. So, so dope, and then he did not like us five times. Yeah, was crazy. Run it back. <laughs> crazy. That's a dope hip hop moment. You know, it's a history moment. It'll probably be like in books later. Yeah, probably so. It'll be, maybe it'll be studied. I mean, his yeah. words be studied regardless. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was dope, and it's like wow, just seeing all these people uniting on stage, 
loving on each other over the demise of Drake. Because when you boil it, you put it in a pot and boil it down, that's what the intention of this whole battle was for Kendrick, is to end Drake, not to out-rap him. Right. This wasn't about rap. Right. Gotcha. And then Amazon streamed it for free. Amazon streamed it, yo. <laughs> like, there's a machine behind this. Jeez. Bezos. I mean, I know he's gone. But um, just Amazon put this concert on. Yet, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. we were on Virginia Beach playing Honestly Nevermind by Drake because that shit slaps. It does. So the reality is that Drake needs a slap. Mm-hmm. He needs to come out with some slaps. Okay. I would say disappear for, we talked about this before, disappear for a while, then come back with the slaps. Yeah, they were saying, go do some ayahuasca. He seen, <laughs> hey, listen, the ayahuasca got Deontay Wilder getting knocked out. <laughs> I don't know. If you want to remain aggressive, you might not want to do ayahuasca. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just wild, man. Like, damn, I've never seen anything like this. i never seen anything like this on the East Coast. We ain't never had no stuff like this go down. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. It's they, crazy, you're going after that boy. Entertaining, but, I mean, I, I saw the white folks video about Drake, them telling him he's like us or something. Mm-hmm. The white boys talking about him. Yeah, you're you're like us. <laughs> you're like you us. are like us. <laughs> that was fantastic, yo. The white boys, man. Shout yeah. out to them. I mean, Drake is probably going to come out with a banger by like September. He's going to go in the lab. He's going to take his time. He's going to take all this stuff in. And he's going to come back with something venomous later. You know, I got to give you some credit here. Yeah, yeah I want to give you some credit. You um do? Yeah, there's there's nothing. There, I'm not saying nothing, but it is a very satisfying feeling when you've um, had sex and then your wife gets up and there's no spot left on the bed. Shout out to that, yo. <laughs> yo, that is <laughs> what? Don't y'all know the spot on the bed? Y'all know if y'all gotta lay on that spot, y'all gotta put a towel down or something. We don't have to do that. Oh <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you talking about? What that are is you great. Doing right now? Well, Jordan unfollowed us, right? She's not, <laughs> she's not gonna be listening. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> isn't isn't that great? What are you doing? <laughs> I thought that was. I thought about this. Not the last time we had sex, but like one of the other times. The and I was like, the, "Yo!" The reason why is because of the drip stick. The drip stick. <laughs> Listen, no, it's not because the last. Um, we can get. If you want to get to the drip stick, <laughs> which is disgusting. I hate saying it. It's so disgusting. The last time, not last time, but one of the other times. <laughs> We had sex, right? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I cannot believe this. <laughs> Should we not talk about sex? Go ahead. Go ahead. We grown, ain't we? We grown. We, we do go. what we want. There you go. Go ahead. So let's just say <laughs> one of the last times we engaged, you know, um, you know, every now and then it's like as a man, you're like, it's not going to go that well. She's not going to get what she thinks she's going to get out of this. I'm going to get what I want to get out of this. And it's not in my control. You have a moment like that every now and then, right? Yes. And I had a moment like that. Yeah. And where it should have ended, <laughs> you didn't see me because you couldn't see me. <laughs> but, my, but it was a struggle. <laughs> to get you to where you needed to be it was a lot of extra work <laughs> and I'm talking about a car driving for five extra miles on e. Art- on E on E oh but you still got to the destination oh Jesus <laughs> I go to the bathroom yeah. I clean up I come back you go to the bathroom I look in the bed there's nothing there. And I was like, this is amazing. I need to talk about this on the podcast. <laughs> oh, 
Do you have anything to add to this? You want to talk about what we watched? <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're co- if you're cognizant of things, then you can withhold things until you can get to where you need to get. You know, you got to position yourself. Kegels work. You got to hold it in. You y'all know? niggas, stay out of my wife DM. I swear, <laughs> I will kill one of y'all niggas. And then you go and you <laughs> you you go and you you know get rid of it. And as needed, a drip stick might need to go. To get it all up so that, that it shit doesn't. That sounds disgusting. A drip stick. It sounds so horrible. Oh, gosh. But you swear by these things. Listen, they work, y'all. If y'all never heard of drip sticks, ladies. What's the other ones called? Swizzle sticks. Swizzle sticks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say that one day when we having sex. Yo, I'm about to swizzle. <laughs> I'm about to swizzle. <laughs> How did, how did we get here? Yeah, I'm about to swizzle, yo. How did we get the here? The swi- sizzle sticks is crazy. <laughs> oh, shit, yo. Yo, y'all need to go to brunch with us, man. Brunch is lit. Okay. This is conversations. We have that. Br- you want to move on to the next topic? Yes. <laughs> we'll be watching. We're the Where's Brunch <laughs> podcast, as you can see. And here's no. what we're watching on TV. Oh, my God. Excuse me, partner. Can you keep that shit down? You see me watching TV. Add little horns on there, hey. yo. Hey. Now that we're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how much of that I'm going to keep. Probably oh, no. You need to put all of it. Oh, I want that clipped <laughs> up, damn it. Clip, clip it, it up. up. Clip it <laughs> drip, up. Dripsticks clip. Can we anyway, get a sponsorship? We have more. Um, <laughs> right. Oh, man. We, as you guys know, we have Apple TV. We watch some pretty premium TV on Apple TV. They've got some great programming. We um, finished out the Dark Matter. We talked the, about the show on the show before. We talked about the show we before. Finished up. We finished. The finale happened mm-hmm. last week. And what did you think? Um. So, look, spoiler alert. Like, we're not going to sit here. This has been yeah. out for weeks. If you haven't if you watched watch it, it. You haven't watched it. If you haven't watched it, you might want to skip. Off. Be towards the end of the show at this point. Whatever. Yeah. Um, so, this multi-dimensional travel thing mm-hmm. and the, the final episode, the episode before last, number eight, right? The multiple Jason? Yes. Excuse me. Multiple Jasons in the same dimension. Right, shit was crazy. It was crazy. They get in accidents to each, with each other. They killing each other. They shooting at each other. They doing mm. all types of shit to each other, trying to be the one who ends up with the girl, mm-hmm. right? And the family, the um, wife, the wife and the family. <clears throat> in the final episode, there was even more. There was, I mean, a zillion of these. These dudes. niggas had a group chat. They, they had a group <laughs> chat, and they did. They had a group chat, straight <laughs> up. Chat. They had a group chat. Yo, Jason one, Jason two, Jason three, Jason four, yeah. blah, 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 so on and so forth. And um, they was all they were trying to work out how they could each spend time with her, share custody, share custody. They wanted to share custody of a wife. Oh, wife is crazy. Oh, yo, that was um, crazy. That was. I it. thought the finale was good. I thought it was good. I thought they did a good job. Um, of kind of wrapping it up to the, yes. you know what I'm saying? Like it was tough because it was so up the entire time that I felt like they kind of needed to kind of chill on the finale. Yes. What else is going to happen? They had to end it. They had to end it. To end and it. it ended with her being with the actual Husband, J- husband that she was originally married to. Yeah, and they had a way to f- to figure out if he was a real one or not, yes. and all this other stuff, or whatever. Yes. Um, and and the son, of course, was with them, and mm-hmm. you know they 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 actually were allowed to leave. Yeah, she made the decision. She went into the group chat and decided to tell them that she made her choice mm-hmm. and to leave her alone. And she knew she knew her husband well enough that her giving her saying this, he was going to respect it. And by he, I mean all All the rest of them, all hundred fifty eleven, right, right. It was crazy. It was crazy, and then they was still mad when she was leaving. Yeah, a couple of them didn't. No, they they wasn't trying to hear it. But why does he get to go? I think they did a good job. I know you said that. It's over. It's nothing else they can do with it. But I think yeah. they can do something else with this. I don't want this. no more. I do. What do you mean? 
This is what? one season. But what, what are we doing? Are we going to go with the black guy? I love time and see travel. What, what, ra- what ruckus he's causing in all these different dimensions? Because you know he was acting a straight fool. They didn't even fool. go there. He was acting a straight fool. They and didn't even go there. Her friend, her best friend, who... And another the light, the light skin chick, right? With the blonde hair, mm-hmm. she was ju- she was traveling. She finally left. And she finally left where she was. They can do some other things. With there this, are you know? things, but you know, I mean, what what are we doing? What where are we meeting? Up? Are we all meeting up somewhere? Like, I don't what know. Are we doing? I don't know. So so, dope. Dark matter is dope. We mm-hmm. we I think we collectively recommend it heavily to everybody. It's really dope. I do have a question about. about Okay. Like, yeah. About it. All right. Nine, we got nine episodes, y'all. So y'all can go watch it. It's now all loaded on Apple TV. It's all on Apple TV. Um, something that came to me about watching this and thinking about it afterwards. Is it white privilege mm. to sit here and watch this family be willing and individuals be willing to go to any dimension with nothing with them? They just go. Mm-hmm. And look, and and basically feel like we're just gonna go wherever the fuck we want, yeah, and just be perfectly fine. No, I was wondering about the money thing. Where the hell is the money coming from? Is it white privilege to not have to worry about that? Yes. <laughs> like, would they be able to make a show with black characters, a realistic show with black characters? We can't just go to any dimension we want to and think that it's gonna be sweet, right? Except for that black guy who went everywhere and he was rich. He's one of those people. Yeah, but it's very much white privilege. It was very much white situation yeah i thought of that it was like yeah, time travel interesting but Here's then the, you got a question oh so black people can't time travel well yeah right well they could i mean like you said homeboy did yes but he was already wealthy yes he had money already he had money he spent millions of dollars just to get the the the, the, the which, vials which is the anomaly right yes the so anomaly. if you have someone who even you know it doesn't have to be a poor person it could be us but we still have incomes Yes. Right. We still have to, you know, a lot of work to do to, yeah. to be where we are. She just walked away just from her go. entire life and took her kid with her husband, and they're just gonna jump into another dimension. Another dimension. And gonna you... be able to eat and drink and sleep and all these things. Like I was trying to figure out how you jump in dimensions and get in hotels. The credit card is not supposed even to match work in the other dimension. <laughs> right. Like how does that work? But that's black people. Maybe we have a scarcity mentality. No. Ooh, <laughs> We're not ooh. coming from a place of abundance. There you go. Maybe so. <laughs> Maybe so. That yes, that's legit. That's interesting. You know what I mean? Because you, yeah, you going where are you going to sleep night one? Yeah. Where you Everybody sleeping? was pulling out the Amex like it wasn't nothing. Right. Yeah. Aim, so uh, credit cards are just good across dimensions. That's some deep shit, right? There. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yo, that and yeah, yeah, that was wild. That mm. that was a, that was an interesting little point that it made me think. Wow. Writers, they just going. Help shit. me understand what's up with the money situation when they jump in dimension. Yeah, I guess they don't have time to get into those like you know minute. Uh, the, the minute I would think that my card wouldn't details. work in another dimension. Right, <laughs> I would too. <laughs> what is it going back to? Where's the bank? Cause they ain't got no cash. The bank is in another dimension. We ain't got no cash. Yo, let's not. Okay. Dark matter was good. Yes, we'll leave it at you know, Hollywood, right? Yes, you, do it. We don't question yes. a person running from, um, you know, mm. <laughs> one they state to it, another. Go run. Just, just end up at the White House. Like yo, we don't question you these. Ride things. your bike from George. No, from Alexand from Arlington. <laughs> From George, no, from Georgetown, and you end up at the CIA on your bike. <laughs> on your bike. <laughs> Where they do that at? <laughs> for anybody who knows, uh, but yeah, for, the, for those that? who know, those in the DMV, y'all, you y'all know. know. If you're not in DMV, my an hour bad, you might not. You are not riding your bike, but it's not a short distance, and it's not easy. <laughs> that easy to do. No, he made at it look all. like. You can just be moving. Um, Tariq on power. Oh shit! This thing is like at school in Connecticut, <laughs> laying in bed, gets a call from someone, and, and next thing you know, he's in New York City. In five minutes. In five minutes. <laughs> the hell? I got to watch a new episode. Oh, Lord. You on your own with that. I'm still watching Tariq on Power and Mary J. Blige and everybody in the cast because, you know. Yo, man, this uh, shooting the podcast earlier thing is all right. It is. It's, all, it's, it's all, what, about to be 630? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We still got time. still light outside. It's we still done. light outside. Not starving. Hey, I know, right? I'm not hungry. No, we usually get hungry during this show. Yes. Yeah, like seven, eight eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. We're like, yo, what are we going to do? Yo, man, love you. I love you more. Good time.
Scooby this, was, back. this is funny. Thank you for embarrassing me. Oh, too. yeah, I did see some crazy stuff there now. But, you know, it's true, man. Some yeah. of y'all, y'all should be able to relate. I mean, for the record, I'm not dry or anything. Like, you know. <laughs> Hell no. <nah. laughs> we married, ain't we? What you talking about? <laughs> I ain't not dry. Just to say that there's no wet spots, like oh no, no, this is uh, not y'all. Y'all should know, y'all grown for y'all should know what I'm talking about. Yeah. No, I ain't got nothing to do with that. No, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. you know what I'm saying? Oh <laughs> yeah, man, y'all, yo, love y'all. Um, make sure y'all following and all that other good stuff. Comment, you know like, what I'm saying? like, comment, share, share, share. share We've been going crazy on you on Instagram lately. Some and, of these topics, and to the people, in Trina the with her controversy. To the people in the comments, I'm not gonna tell you how to suck my dick, but I told it's not to tell necessary. <laughs> Some of the comments y'all be making, like seriously, why are y'all so triggered by black women? Why is everything that I say so triggering to y'all? Like for real, yeah, man. Get y'all picket signs and y'all keep walking outside the black woman delegation headquarters. All right, we'll see y'all next time, man. Y'all be good. Bye. <laughs>